My name is Jim Trudeau. I'm a senior applications engineer here at Cypress, and we're talking about the peripheral driver library, or PDL, for FM0 and FM4 parts. In this video, we're going to talk about the code examples that come with the PDL and how to use them. And we're going to use both boards. We're going to use the S6E2GM board, which is an FM4 part, and the S6E1B8 starter kit, which is an FM0 plus part. And we'll run the same example on both of them. But before we get started on that, let's talk about how you would use the PDL. As a developer, if you're writing code, what are the things that you need to do to get your code up and running using the PDL? The first thing you need is to understand a file called pdluser.h. This is really a series of defines, and you use this to turn on any of the features of the PDL that you're going to be using. So, for example, if you're going to be using an ADC, you would say enable ADC and say PDL on. The second thing you need to do is configure the peripheral. The way the PDL is designed is you create a configuration structure and fill in the fields of the configuration structure that control how the peripheral operates. And this is how you can create custom drivers using a single body of code. The third thing you need to do is you need to initialize the peripheral. To initialize the peripheral, you just make an API function call. So you call an init function, you pass in the configuration structure, and you're good to go. Once you've done that, you enable or start the peripheral. So the peripheral doesn't begin operating automatically in most cases, so when you're ready to use it, you turn it on. And finally, once it's running, you can use it, and you use it making API function calls into the PDL library. So you might start a scan or transmit data or receive data or clear a buffer or clear an interrupt. There's all kinds, hundreds of API calls that you can make, and each peripheral has a set of function calls that drive the peripheral. So how do you find the PDL code examples? They're in the PDL installation, wherever you had it installed on your machine, and there is an examples folder. So you double click examples, and the examples are organized by board. So they're created to run out of the box for either of these kits, and we're going to use the FM4 kit. So we go to the S6E2GM folder, and there are code examples for every peripheral. We want to use ADC, so we'll show you that. And we're going to do one channel polling. This is a very simple example. It reads an analog channel and then puts the information that it reads from the analog signal uh, into a terminal window. Okay, so let's open that up. And inside the code example are project files for four popular IDEs, the Atollic True Studio, IAR Embedded Systems, the um, iSystem Win IDE, and the Kyle MDK tools. Let's use those. And there's a project file that is already configured to just work. So we'll double click that project file and the Kyle Microvision tools come up and running. Let's take a tour of what's inside the code examples. We're looking at a particular project. We're looking at the debug build because we're going to run this in the debugger. First, just to give you an idea, the drivers folder inside this code example has all of the PDL source code. So you can do anything you want with this code example and it should work. In fact, we only need a couple of these files, but they're all here just to be safe. The config folder has PDL user.h. This is actually critical to using the PDL. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to open that file. In the file, you see that it is a long list. This file is hundreds of lines long, and it is a single line for each feature in the PDL that you might want to turn on or off. By default, the vast majority of them are off. We're going to be using the ADC, so you see that this line, which is line 38, has enable ADC0 turned on. That's how you configure the PDL as a whole. You come into pdluser.h and you turn features on or off as you need them. So let's look at some of the code in this code example. Let's look at main.c. Inside the source group is main.c, and this is the code that's actually going to configure, initialize, and use the analog to digital converter driver and we have the init function. The first thing it does is it zeroes out. We have a configuration structure called STC config in this code, and we're going to zero that out. And then this is the code that actually sets up 
all of the fields inside the structures so that the peripheral behaves correctly. You learn how to do this using the PDL documentation. Let's take a quick look at the documentation. The PDL API reference is installed along with the PDL. You'll find it in the doc folder in the PDL installation, wherever you had it installed. And if you open up the PDL API reference, this is what you'll see is the home screen. This is documentation generated right out of the source code. You will actually see most of this information in the source code itself if you look inside the PDL, but it's a lot handier on a web page. To see the information on any particular driver, you look in the driver section. You can pick the driver that you're interested in. Since this code example uses an ADC, let's open up the ADC. And when you select it, you'll see a general description and some configuration consideration information. What do you need to do to get this up and running? And this can be really useful. But if you expand each of the drivers, you have all of the technical details down into the weeds on how the PDL works. So for example, here is every function for the ADC in the API, and you can see everything you need to know about any function or any macro, any variable, any of the data structures that are involved, what their fields are, all the information is in here. So once you've got it configured, meaning you've filled in all the fields in the structure, the next thing you need to do is to initialize it. So here on line 115 in this example is the call to initialize the ADC based on the configuration structure. And we pass in a hardware address and the configuration structure. And then we need to turn it on. And that's the call to enable wait ready. So let's enable it and let's wait until it's ready. And when it's done, then we can use it. And so the code triggers a scan. So we're now going to read some data and then it waits until it's done. So it checks for a flag and then pulls the data out. All right, so let's see this work for real. We're going to build the code, which will take a moment or two in the Kyle tools. And once that's done, we will debug it. Now that the code is built, let's debug it. We'll click the debug button and the debugger should come up in just a moment. The debugger is up and running, and we're stopped at the first line of main. What this code does it is put the data from the ADC out to a terminal window. So before we run it, let's bring up a terminal window. I've got a terminal window open. We're currently disconnected. We will connect to the board. Now let's run the code. So we'll click the Go button. And here we're getting data in the terminal window from the ADC. And you can see that there is a number for the ambient light level in the room. If I were to shine a light, the number goes up because it's brighter. And likewise, if I hide that sensor, the number goes down. And if we were deep, dark in a cave, it would be pretty near zero. So that's how that works. But let me show you the flexibility of the PDL. We're going to run the same example um, on the FM0. So let's kill the terminal window and we can kill the MDK tools. And I've already got up and running the same example for the FM0 Plus board running in the IAR tools, just to show you that we've got support for a lot of IDEs. So let's unplug the FM4 starter kit and plug in the FM0 Plus starter kit. So back on the desktop, I've got the tools up and running and we'll just click the debug button. We will build the code and run it on this board. And we've got the debugger up and running and we're stopped at the first line of main. Let's start the code going and go to our terminal window. There's the same process, but in this case, it's not reading a light sensor. There isn't a light sensor on this board. We have a potentiometer or a pot. And if we turn the potentiometer, the numbers from the sensor go from maximum to minimum. So let's go over what we've learned in this video. You configure the PDL as a whole using pdluser.h. You just turn on the features that you want to use. You configure an individual peripheral by declaring a configuration structure and filling in the fields for that structure. You learn about what those fields are using the PDL documentation. You then use the PDL function API to initialize the peripheral, to start it up or enable it, and then to use it. 
You've learned that the PDL works transparently across FM platforms, so we ran the same example on two entirely different boards, and that the API reference documentation is your friend. You can learn everything that you need to know using the API reference documentation. Programming a microcontroller may not be easy, but the PDL sure makes it easier. Thanks for watching.